We've got the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. Subcompact with a turbo. Easy now. Put your foot into it. Come on, Andrea. It goes when you want it to. Mm -hmm. Gets there. It gets there. Makes a little fuss. But you <laughs> can... ma makes more than a little fuss, but I you, think. But you do get there. Yeah. All right, this is one of only a few vehicles that comes standard with a turbocharged engine. What's under the hood of this thing? A 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder matched to a CVT. 152 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive. So standard turbo engines are in the Volkswagen Taos, mm -hmm. also the Chevrolet Trax, but that's just a three cylinder yeah. and others have it available. You get it standard in this. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into the other stuff you get with this. What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with an eight inch touchscreen, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a four speaker audio system, six way manual driver seat, a four way manual passenger seat, heated front seats, cloth upholstery, automatic climate control, remote keyless entry, and forward collision warning. In the U.S., a 7-inch touchscreen is standard. The 8-inch touchscreen and heated front seats are available, one up from the base model. We have super all-wheel control button. Mm -hmm. What else can we put it in? Got to put it in, ask for a subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop. And then you can watch that them. That wasn't the best one, but anyway, you get it. All right, what else can you do? You can also follow along on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's going on behind the scenes. Also to get a question in, you'll find out about that halfway through. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto, and the links are below the like button. Well, it's been a few years since we've driven a Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. What are you thinking over there, Andrea? I feel like the powertrain is a little bit pokey. I think that's the best way to describe it. It gets there when you want it to, but when you accelerate hard, the cabin gets louder. It definitely seems to work a lot harder than I remember. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's all coming down to the CVT. Mm -hmm. It's the way the CVT is calibrated and the virtual gears that they have in there or the spectrum of available gears is not as broad as others do. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Subaru, for example, with their CVT is much better. Yeah. Uh, but it's all done for efficiency. We'll get to that halfway through in questions, coffee and cars. My biggest complaint, I can live with the engine because you adjust mm -hmm. to your driving style okay. to what you've got uh, at play here. What you can't change though is the very vague steering. Yeah. We were driving on the highway the other day and you're always course correcting and that I find annoying. The engine I can kind of get around. Yeah and I also think when you get up to cruising speed you'll find that it actually feels pretty good. The cabin gets a little bit quieter everything just feels calmer but like I said it's getting there and when you make a pass on the highway you're going to have to plan for that all right one thing I want to talk about is Mitsubishi has a kind of before the latest Outlander and after the latest Outlander whether it's the gas and especially for the PHEV has really changed the game for the brand it's brought in a whole bunch of new different older and more affluent buyers that yep. want that plug-in especially this is kind of the old Mitsubishi that is a value play mm -hmm. it's for people that want good basic transportation they don't want to spend a lot and it comes with a really long warranty it's like the two separate divisions almost of Mitsubishi. Yeah, it's the same as Kia and Hyundai. You get a five-year warranty or 100,000 kilometers. It's good. There's nothing wrong with this vehicle. It does a lot well, but you do have to get used to the sluggish powertrain. Okay, we're on the kind of quasi-highway now. Put your foot into it. Let's hear it go. See? So it does go. Yeah, it does go. It just takes a second to get going, and it does get louder. And then look, Everything calms down, everything's a little bit quieter. You get used to it. Here's what I think. You adapt to what you've got at play. You certainly adapt to what you've got. Do I want to adapt? I don't think so. All right, I'm gonna get into the design of this thing. We parked this, we were at the mall, and we parked this right next to a Lexus RX. Yeah. And the back shape of the window, even the spoiler at the top of this trim, was almost identical to the Lexus RX in mm -hmm. shape. It's not the same product, don't, no. don't get me wrong there. But I think that it's not a bad looking unit. I think it's an attractive design. It gets up to 8.5 inches of ground clearance, which is really great for the subcompact class. It comes standard with a black grille, chrome exterior accents, halogen headlights, LED rear combination lights, 
18 inch wheels and a temporary spare tire. Hooray! In the US, 16 inch wheels are standard and you do get LED headlights in the US, available in Canada. All right, we are in a Canadian specific trim called Noir. Yes. I'll translate that for you. That's French for black. It is. And you can see she's all black. Yeah. Black wheels, black everything. And if that's your thing, good for you. I don't like black cars. <laughs> I'm past black cars, Andrea. I hate washing black cars. Mm -hmm. But I had to wash this car before I did the, all the beauty shots. Yeah. Because it's noir. Yes, it's all black. I guess it kind of ups the sportiness a little bit of this vehicle to go all black. Uh, but definitely it's a personal choice. Moving to the interior, gotta say it's comfortable. Seating position in here is great and I think it offers a lot of value. I'm not like super crazy about the center console and the screen sitting up. I think a redesign would be nice to give it a fresher, more modern design. It's functional though, Andrea. It all it works is. very well. I'm quite happy with the mix of materials in here. They've got yeah. this satin aluminum look. They've got a kind of a faux carbon on the door soft dash pad, yeah. soft, you know, soft materials where you touch. I think that's all done quite well. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's noir on the inside mm -hmm. as well, but I would say that uh, it's functional. You're right. It could be improved, but not bad. This comes standard with cloth upholstery. You can also get premium cloth. We've got ultra suede and a leatherette. And also on the top trim, there's leather appointed seats. There are some features that are missing in this vehicle, which is not uncommon for the sub compact class. There's no ventilated front seats or a wireless phone charger, but it does have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if you're using that feature and plugging in your phone, your phone's going to charge you anyway. Or you can buy an inexpensive dongle. I just got one sure. for my car. It's like 60 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. And then you wirelessly connect every time, but it won't charge. No. Uh, one great feature, actually two great features in the subcompact set, Andrea, yeah. that I really like about this. It comes with an available one up from the base model power lift gate well yeah. done mitsubishi so if you like this size of vehicle but you have to have a power lift gate this has it and heated rear seats mm -hmm. this is nice stuff and it has a panoramic sunroof oh, yeah. and i like the dual shade so if you're in the front and you want it closed but someone in the back wants it open it's nice kind of to have that feature you don't see that a lot in this subcompact class. And, and I'm shocked it's it's uh, electric, right? You would think it would just be a little slide shape. Yeah. I mean, that's a level of refinement they put in there that they didn't have to. And I really think that this offers a ton of value. In Canada, if you just move up one from the base model, it opens you up to some extra key features like a heated steering wheel, the power tailgate, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. In the US, most of those features are on the SE trim, but the heat Heated steering wheel, you'll find it on the SEL model. You know what I like are the, the heated seat switches mm -hmm. are actual physical switches. I know. So when you put it on and then you get out the car and you come back an hour later, say you go to the grocery store, the seat heater is still on. Yeah. You, you don't have to hit it. You see that with the cross track too yeah, they on do the that. older models, right? Or on the lower trims. I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. If you get the big screen then. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Other available features include navigation, a multi-view camera system system, head up display, power front seats, leather appointed seats, and an eight speaker sound system. It's kind of nice that a power passenger seat is offered. You don't see that a lot in this class. One other vehicle that does have it is the Kia Seltos on the higher trim. Uh, speaking of seating, Andrew, here's me getting in the back seat, which we mentioned is heated in this trim. And I would say the space is adequate. It's kind of what you expect from the subcompact class. How does it stack up? Comparing the Eclipse Cross to the Toyota Corolla Cross, front row legroom at 40.9 inches is two inches smaller than the Toyota. Second row legroom at 35.3 inches is three inches bigger than the Corolla Cross. Then you lift up the power tailgate in this model. That's a wonderful thing. And underneath the cargo area is a beautiful temporary spare tire. Cargo space behind the second row at 23.4 cubic feet and overall cargo space at 50.1 cubic feet falls short to the Corolla Cross. All right, let's get into the questions. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Reliability and resale. I know the warranty is good, but after that? After, well, I guarantee you the research <laughs> department looked it up. I, I would guess it's kind of average. 
Yeah, it's average. JD Power gives it a 79 out of 100 for reliability and Consumer Reports 3 out of 5. So that's not bad. Interesting with Consumer Reports for customer satisfaction, it only gave this vehicle a 2 out of 5. I think that's probably got to do with the fact that the dealer network in the United States is quite small. I think so. It's more robust in Canada. The market share in Canada is greater. These cars sell incredibly well. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing I'll say for Mitsubishi is this vehicle and the RV are the smaller vehicle mm -hmm. have been in market now for several years and they don't make many changes they're very wow. my, uh, very small cosmetic changes they did a facelift on this one about two three years ago uh, but that's the good thing about buying a car that's been made over and over mm -hmm. again you kind of think they got it figured out yeah and I think it actually is quite a nice design especially to the exterior the fuel economy seems pretty dismal for a 2024 model my 2012 Camry four-cylinder gets 8.2 liters per hundred kilometers in the city and 5.6 on the highway. Granted, it is a sedan and not an SUV, but I believe even the Mazda CX-5 base engine does better. You are right. I'm surprised by the fuel economy, considering this does have a CVT. The Mazda non-turbo engine gets better fuel economy than this, and believe it or not, the turbocharged four-cylinder on the highway gets better fuel economy than this on the highway. Yeah, so the one thing about uh, Mitsubishi, same thing again, they've been using the same engines for a long time yeah. and it's turbocharged. So when you put your foot into it, and you really got to put your foot into it to get it to go. It will do the job. You just got there's a lot of uh, pedal effort there. Mm -hmm. uh, so take that into consideration. You maybe spend more on fuel than you would something else. But remember what you paid for it. Yeah, it was, true. wasn't expensive and it's got that long warranty. So there's something to that. And there's a lot of different trims to choose from, which actually come fairly well equipped. So you can get a lower model. I test drove one of these. I found the forward visibility to be outstanding. Definitely the best of all the vehicles I drove. However, the engine seemed underpowered. It felt a bit sluggish and heavy. I'm not sure I like the turbo. Interestingly enough, the Chevrolet Trax and the Buick and Vista have 162 pound-feet of torque. This is 184 pound-feet of torque, yet the Invista and the Trax are so well tuned. Yeah. Like it's, and the six-speed automatic yes. transmission. But boy, you would think that they have a lot more torque than this. Okay, it's all the way it's calibrated. So mm -hmm. this is a continuously variable transmission. And you look at those two vehicles, the uh, General Motors cousins, and they have a six-speed automatic, conventional yeah. automatic. As Antri mentioned, it's very well calibrated. So the way this is tuned, because it doesn't have good efficiency, they've made the CVT really quite lazy. Mm -hmm. You can get CVTs that are quite snappy, like you think about the new Impreza, for example. Yeah. So it has a much better uh, uh, virtual first gear to get you away from a stop sign. Yeah. That's not the case with this. Mm -mm. One thing about this car mm -hmm. it's got a really good stereo Actually, so, does, yeah. so when you turn up the tunes, that's all uh, memory. Oh, you just want to get back to the, yes, the window. Turn up the tunes. Turn up the tunes. I, 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 we sat down here to set this up, and I was putting the camera up and putting the lights up, and I said, "What did I say, Andrea?" Excellent. Big window. Look at the big window. Visibility. I can tell the size of the window based on where the camera is in relation to the mirror and the radio and the dash and all that. Mm -hmm. This is a big front window. And I love the seating position in here. You sit up and over the dash. It is a higher seating position. There are a lot of things that this Eclipse Cross does well. One thing you should never do, Andrea, What's that? is go like this to the camera. Yeah, not a good idea. They don't need to see your hairs. And my nose? Nostril. No, the spider went up there. Nostril hairs. All right, now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? It is good small value for money for someone who is not looking for fancy stuff in the interior. I am currently have a 2022 Outlander LE Premium and love the features. And I'm looking to get an SUV for my wife soon. Since this model is now six years old, is there any news on when there will be a redesign? Mitsubishi as a brand isn't kind of known for doing updates a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that there would be an opportunity, however, for them to introduce a powertrain they have in other parts of the world yeah. into this to make it more fuel efficient. We've already talked about it not being that great. Yeah. So they could do that and maybe give it a slight tweak and call it new. Yeah, there is a plug-in hybrid that's available in Europe. And I think consumers would get really excited about this Eclipse Cross if there was a plug-in hybrid. The Outlander PHEV has been 
such a huge success for mm -hmm. Mitsubishi and the range is really good on it. Not quite as good as the RAV4 Prime, but very good. I would love to see this Eclipse Cross get something like that. All right, so let's get into one of the big things is, of course, the pricing of all mm -hmm. of this. So we're going to start with that in our vital stats. The base model starts at just under $29,000 Canadian, and the top GT model is just over $38,000. In the U.S., the base model starts at just over $26,000, and the top trim is just over $32,000 U.S. Here's the fuel economy for this 1.5 liter turbo. It's 9.6 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 8.9 on the highway. That's 25 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway. This Eclipse Cross can tow 1,500 pounds, and the warranty is a selling feature. It's five years, 100,000 kilometers, or 60,000 miles. So you like the idea of a subcompact crossover. Here's the big hitters for you to check out. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Kia Seltos with a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine, 147 horsepower, and a starting price of almost $28,000. The Hyundai Kona with the same powertrain as the Seltos and a starting price of $28,500. The Honda HRV with a 2-liter 4-cylinder, 158 horsepower, and a starting price over $31,000. The Toyota Corolla Cross with a 2-liter 4-cylinder, 169 horsepower, and a starting price just over $30,000. So there are four subcompact SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round. Two things we like, two things we'd like to see improve. I really like the price point and all the different trim offerings. I like the fact they have features many brands don't have. Mm, I just wish it wasn't so sluggish. I would like the steering to be more precise. As a daily commuter, this ticks all the right boxes. This is the value play.